It has to be about a goal of saying everybody should end up in the same place. And since we didn't start in the same place, some folks might need more equitable distribution. Elon Musk goes onto a podcast and absolutely destroys Kamala Harris and voices his support for President Trump. So in this video, we're going to talk about it. Welcome to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And so we could get this out to more people just like you and me. So Elon Musk, obviously the richest man in America, the owner of the X platform, also formerly known as Twitter, uh, goes on to the Lex Freeman podcast. And uh, he lays it out very clearly on why he is supporting President Trump. Um, now, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to show you before the endorsement what he had said that he would do just to be very uh, thorough with this. And then we're also going to show you why he is supporting President Trump, because he believes that Kamala Harris, that her policies are uh, representing communism. So without further ado, uh, let's play the first clip. You and speaking of mega, you recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I was at a dinner. I, I was not done. I was at a breakfast at a friend's place, and Donald Trump came by. That's it. So you didn't go there to meet him? I, no, I went to a, a, a friend of mine's house, uh, and it said, it said Donald Trump's coming by for breakfast. Is that uh, just so you know? Like, okay, fine. What'd you discuss? I've, I don't. <laughs> um, let's just say uh, he did most of the talking. What <laughs> what Just, and, and the, the, the normal things he says. There was nothing particularly gra 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 groundbreaking or new, but uh, he, you know, uh, President Trump likes to talk, and so he talked. I, I, I don't call him saying anything that he hasn't said publicly, uh, and that was it. it. Was just a breakfast. Did he ask you for money? He didn't. Did he ask you for a donation? No, he didn't. No. You said you're not going to donate to any candidate. That's correct. Why not? I think... Uh, well, I'll, I'll voice my opinion. Um, I think uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to put uh, a thumb on the scale monetarily uh, that uh, is, you know, significant. Are you going to loan him money to help pay his bills? No. Not at all? Pay his legal bills. I'm not. I'm not paying paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. And he did not ask you for money. And he did not ask me for money. Are you going to? So you're not going to endorse a candidate. I may, in the final stretch, endorse a candidate, uh, but I don't know yet. Uh, I want to make a considered decision uh, before the election. Uh, and if I do decide to endorse a candidate, then I will explain exactly why. Are you leaning towards anyone? No. You're not leaning towards anyone. Because you've been... Well, I'm sure I'm leaning, leaning away from Biden. You're leaning away. <laughs> I've made no secret of that. Yeah, so it, obviously he uh, told Don Lemon, this is way back in, um, this is about March time frame, and uh, he was being pressed on it, and he did not commit to an actual answer, and he was very clear that he would detail uh, why uh, he is endorsing a candidate when he does put out his endorsement. And so obviously we all know that he did endorse President Trump after the failed assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, he put on the X platform that he endorses President Trump. And so now he went on to a podcast and elaborated on why that was. Let's take a look at that. Uh, since I am interviewing Donald Trump. Cool. You want to stop by? Yeah, sure. I'll stop in. There was tragically an, an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Uh, after this, you tweeted that you endorse him. What's your philosophy behind that endorsement? What do you hope Donald Trump does for the future of this country and for the future of humanity? Well, I think there's, you know, people tend to take like, say an endorsement as, um, well, I, I agree with everything that person has ever done their entire life, 100% wholeheartedly. And that's that's not gonna be true of anyone. Um, but we have to pick, you know, we've got two choices really for for who's president. And it's not, not just who's president, but the entire admin, administrative structure uh, changes over. Um, and I thought uh, Trump displayed uh, courage under fire, objectively. Um, you know, he's, uh, just got shot. He's got blood streaming down his face, and he's like fist pumping. 
saying fight, you know, like that's uh, impressive. Like you can't feign bravery in a situation like that. Um, like most people would have been ducking, they would not be, because it could be a, a second shooter, you don't know. Um, the, the president of the United States got to represent the country and uh, they're representing you, they're representing everyone in America. Well, like you want someone who is strong and courageous uh, to represent the country. Um, that's not to say that he is without flaws, we all have flaws, um, but on balance, um, and certainly at the time, it was um, a choice of, you know, Biden, poor, poor guy, you know, has trouble climbing a flight of stairs, and the other one's fist pumping after getting shot. This is no, no comparison. I mean, who do you want dealing with uh, some of the toughest people and, you know, other world leaders who are pretty tough themselves? And um, I, I mean, it, I'll, I'll tell you, like, what are the things that I think are important? Um, you know, I think we want a secure border. We don't have a secure border. Um, we want safe and clean cities. Uh, I think we want to re reduce the amount of spending that we're at least slow down the, the spending. Um, and uh, because we're, we're currently spending at a rate that is bankrupting the country. The interest payments on US debt this year exceeded the entire Defense Department spending. If this continues, all of the federal government taxes will simply be paying the interest. And then, and you, you keep go, going down that road, and you, you end up, you know, in the tragic situation that Argentina had back in the day. Argentina used to be one of the most prosperous places in the world, and hopefully, with Malay taking over, he can restore that. But um, it's it was an incredible fall from grace for Argentina to go from being one of the most prosperous places in the world to um, being very far from that. So I think we should not take American prosperity for granted. Okay, so you guys hear what he had to say about why he endorsed President Trump. Uh, it's a binary d decision. That's what it is at the end of the day. And there's a lot of people too emotionally uh, caught up to think to see it this way. The fact remains is that one party, which is the progressive left, which is represented by uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh, uh, they represent the idea that the government needs to expand. And if the government needs to expand, that means we're going to spend more money. And if we're going to spend more money, that means our taxes must go up because they have to pay for it somehow. That is a undisputable fact. OK, the other side, which are conservatives and Republicans, they represent slowing down. We need to minimize the government. We need to minimize spending. And I have more faith that the Republicans will do that more effectively than the Democrats will. So that's point number one. Uh, point number two is going back to someone's character, um, and that is what happens when they're under fire? What do they do? When President Trump was under fire, he raised his fist in the air, and he said, fight, fight, fight. That says a lot about someone. That is not a scripted thing. That is not a staged thing. That's not something you do when you almost got your head blown off. Um, now, if you look at Kamala Harris, her thing to do is to go into hiding. She cannot do any news conferences. Okay, She's not going to answer any tough questions. She cannot handle that stuff. We know this to be true. This is why she hasn't done an official press conference since 2021. I looked it up. You should too. And number three, if you're still on the fence and you're trying to figure out why, it's not even about being a supporter of President Trump. It's about being a supporter of the policies that will actually impact your life in a positive way. The progressive left will not improve your life. Okay, they will make it worse. That's what has happened. They want open borders. They want men and women's sports. They want transgender uh, uh, kids to get gender affirming care, right? Uh, they want to give children puberty blockers. This is what they represent. They want illegal migrants to get driver's license and vote in elections. This is what they represent. So uh, at the end of the day, um, it's not even about, are you a MAGA supporter? Are you a Trump supporter? It's not about that. It's about your life. Which policies do you think will improve your life? The progressive left or Republicans? And that's why Elon Musk went on the X platform and absolutely destroyed Kamala Harris by calling her a communist. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. So as you guys can see, he says Kamala is quite literally a communist. She wants not merely equal opportunity, but equal outcomes. And so what is he actually referring to? Well, let me play the video where she is detailing that. It has to be about a goal of saying everybody should end up in the same place. And since we didn't start in the same place, some folks might need more equitable distribution giving resources based on equity, understanding that we, we fight for equality, but we also need to fight for equity, understanding not everyone starts out at the same place. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. 
equality suggests often everybody should get the same thing. Well, that often assumes everybody started out in the same place, as opposed to equity, which is everyone should end up in the same place. Yeah, uh, so you guys saw that. And uh, yeah, everybody needs to end up in the same place. And the, the problem with that is if you start creating government policies around that type of ideology, you're punishing people who have worked very hard to get to where they are today because you're trying to slow them down in order to speed other people up. That's exactly what ends up happening, but they're not going to say that because they are woke as they come, as she detailed here. You know, we have to stay woke. Like everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that is just not good whatsoever. That That is absolutely frightening that she could potentially become the president of the United States and she would be the person negotiating or going against Putin or people from Iran or people from North Korea or China. It, it just is frightening. But anyhow, what you need to be focused on if you're still on the fence is just the policies. It doesn't matter what comes out of President Trump's mouth. It does not matter what the news says uh, about how dangerous he is. What matters is what does recorded history say? When he served four years as the president, wasn't your life better? Yes or no? Okay, yes. Did he start any wars during his presidency? Yes or no? No, he did not. Perfect. Uh, during his presidency, did he do anything racist? Did he purposely minimize black people? No, he did not. But this is what the media will have you believe, okay? So at the end of the day, as I wrap up this video, just have a few points for you. There's a lot of people like Elon Musk that have come out and have endorsed President Trump. His support is at an all-time high. His poll numbers are at an all-time high. He's never had better poll numbers than now. So for all you people out there that are kind of worried that you know Kamala Harris has all this momentum, that is true. She does because they finally have a real candidate. Okay, President Biden was not a real candidate. He, he was virtually gone. Okay, his body was there, but he was not there. So of course that's going to exist. But don't like don't miss the bigger picture here, which is, you know, his poll numbers have never been as high as they are today. So at the end of the day, as I wrap up this video, um, you guys need to stay focused. Um, there's a lot of people out there supporting Trump and Elon Musk is one of them. And so that is my mindset about this. What about you? What do you guys think about Elon Musk finally endorsing President Trump and why he endorsed him by laying it out very clearly? Uh, I want to hear your answers and why you are supporting Trump in this upcoming election or why are you not uh, put your answers in the comment section below thank you for checking out the video today uh, stay grateful stay focused and stay true peace